Okay, um, good morning. Uh, I'm Bill Payne, and I'm here with Marie Matera at the American Legion, Post 72, Sotheby's, New York, for our uh, Library of Congress Veterans History Project. And also with us today is uh, Alan Brzezinski, who's our cameraman. So, um, Ms. Matera, thank you for coming. Welcome to our History Project. Thank you. So are you going to tell us about your experience when you served in the United States Army during the uh, Korean War? Um, can you tell us where you, 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 uh, you must have enlisted. There was no draft for the women, right? Uh, no, I enlisted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where were you living at the time that you enlisted? I was living in uh, West Jewett uh, in Catskills. You want to do something after you got out of high school. Right. And uh, why did you pick that branch of the service that you went into? Actually, at the time I, I did want to get into the labs, uh, but I think the time was like three years, and only at that time was like two. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, uh, so many people told me that I wasn't the type of person to go in the army. So uh, mostly men, mostly men. and uh, mm -hmm. I, I persisted and decided that I was going to, you know, at that time I wanted to get in the West, but when I went, they mm -hmm. said because it was uh, two years from the Army and with the information I got from all the men in the family, I decided that maybe I'd take the two years in the Army, mm -hmm. and then if I wanted to stay in service, then switch over to the West or something. So the West was the Women's uh, Army uh, Air Force. Air Force, right. yeah. And that was a separate uh, service at that time, right? <coughs> and uh, do you recall the first days uh, in service? What was it like when you got in? Where did you go to, to get started? Well, I uh, left from Albany and uh, went down to uh, Fort Lee. In Virginia? In mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> the first day, was a shocker because, uh, you know, we, it, you were dressed as a civilian and, uh, you know, I had just gotten out of modeling school so when <laughs> some of the pictures, here I am in this beautiful suit and, uh, and my hair pulled back and that. And it's hard, we fell out, she, she had a whole pool, we fell out. Everybody dressed so differently. Mm -hmm. and, Strangely enough, the sergeant picked me to go to the orderly room and get a rake and rake up the coal behind the mess hall, which I thought was kind of ridiculous in these high heels and this outfit, but I did it anyway. But uh, so that was that was the experience of my first day in, in the army. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know, they just uh, it was like I said, getting up early in the morning, a lot of fun. My idea of an ideal vacation, but uh, anyway, that was uh, mm -hmm. my first day. So it took a little getting used to, huh? Yeah. And uh, tell me more about your boot camp experience. You mentioned that uh, you had a sergeant that taught you how to do Marine Corps type drill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, normally uh, they have a parade day, and uh, you would dress up and you would dress up in uniform. she would march you to the parade field. We'd have a parade. Mm -hmm. And on the way back, uh, because we had, we were barracks one, and there was barracks two, three, and so on. Mm -hmm. But in between the two barracks, there was like a roadway. And uh, we saw this Sergeant Kraut would get us there, mm -hmm. and she would let us do marine drill, which mm -hmm. was terrific. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how you go in different directions and then come together. We just loved it. She was tough as a sergeant, mm -hmm. but, but uh, we just, you know, she did the job. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, other things that you learned in, in boot camp, can you tell us something about that? Uh, I don't know. You know, they kept you pretty busy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, only, the only thing I remember was uh, they gave us these off 
Russell with his PT dresses, his little abnus, and then he marches in front of the uh, the, uh, the servicemen's club and people out there, and here you're marching with these crazy boots and this, this, this apron dress or whatever. But uh, that, uh, other than that, you know, they kept me pretty busy uh, doing things and polishing, you know, all this sort of thing. So uh, we didn't have much time for uh, that. Other than, like I said, we had like GI night. Mm -hmm. uh, and strangely enough, uh, when they gave us our shots, they did it on a Thursday, which was GI night. And uh, what happened after they we had a tennis shot or something, anyway, it hurt like crazy. But we had to scrub floors, polish shoes, do everything we had to do to get ready for inspection the next day, which was a white glove inspection. But uh, I'll tell you, it, uh, and then I think there was one other time they pulled a fire drill mm -hmm. at 3 o'clock in the morning, and a friend of mine had to take the, had to take the fire extinguisher off the wall and drag it down. And the MPs were saying, come on, come on, come on. And, I said, and then she was complaining mm -hmm. that she had to uh, carry this, uh, mm -hmm. this thing, moaning and groaning, and uh, I'll tell you. And, uh, other than that, you know, and I found out you never volunteered for anything because they already volunteered. For you. I got to the point that some of the some of the people when you saw the sergeant come, you would run to the ladies' room and stand on the toilet seat. So this way they, you know, they didn't know you were around. But uh, other than that, you know, it was. Uh, so you got through boot camp okay, huh? Right. <laughs> now you, you told us before we were talking you served during the Korean War. And uh, you could just uh, mention uh, to us, uh, after you left Fort Lee, you mentioned you went to uh, Murphy General Hospital in Massachusetts. Right. Uh, what, what did you do there? Uh, I worked at the information desk in the main building. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was quite a lonely job because you're getting those, uh, they were big long hallways and uh, the, uh, the headquarters building was uh, where you entered the thing was way away from everybody else. Mm -hmm. So it got to be pretty lonely. And uh, when I took over for it, the gentleman who, uh, who had the job before, he was telling me about these noises I would hear, but don't be afraid, he said, because uh, if, if it sounds weird, he said, you, you, you might get frightened. And then he finds out. So I finally found out the noise I heard was the rope hitting the flagpole. Uh, and uh, that, you know, that that got me over being fine. But you did fall asleep and uh, mm -hmm. woke up one time and you were prepared to go and try the desk. And I wondered what, what that was about because, uh, you know, you can't stay awake all the way long without mm -hmm. anything going on. But uh, other than that, mm -hmm. I think it was just the MP checking to mm -hmm. see that everything was all right. I did get involved in uh, the Molly Girl team. And we did play the uh, first Molly and Gary Tournament with Michael was Jay, who was Molly, J, grew up Molly. Mm -hmm. And there was another one. But we won both times. So uh, I think we had one in 1949. Anyway, there were two tournaments that, were, you know, they moved us to Fort Lee. Mm -hmm. I mean, Camp Fort Dix. Fort Dix, yeah. We had all the men team because they called us Murphy's Angels. Ah. So the uh, men team that had played before, well, it was really nice because they were back against the play. Mm -hmm. oh, Murphy's Angels. <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, that was uh, about my experience there mm -hmm. with Murphy. Mm -hmm. Did you mention you went to Fort or Camp Stoneman, California? And you were on your way overseas? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, before I went, I had a furlough and, uh, and I went uh, back to Brooklyn to see my grandmother and my mother was down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I I got a flight to uh, oh, the, the airport in Washington. I was going to pick up the radio. Okay. What? 
Washington, D.C.? Yeah, and they have, you know, you could definitely call these flights any way you wanted to go. And so I got to Washington, and I signed in, and I was waiting. There were many people waiting there for hops to some flights. But I was very fortunate because they, Of anything, we because we were on tran we were you know transient, mm -hmm. they uh, gave us jobs. But you know the sad part was we had to handle records of guys going overseas mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. And then uh, we were conscientious what we did, mm -hmm. but uh, you know it, it wasn't like a steady job. Mm -hmm. So we kind of uh, sometimes we still we did our job, but you know mm -hmm. we had time. What we did was, after the records were all uh, set up and, and, and uh, contained and like that, we then went down to the uh, docks to see the more. Mm. And this one time we went, and uh, the, uh, the one girl, I found out later, the one girl went in and the thought was that they're nice. He says, where were you? And she said, I went down to the docks. Mm -hmm. So that all of a sudden I, I come along and he says, and where were you? I said, I went down to the docks to see the, the, the project. He says, everybody went down to the docks to see everybody. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, and everybody laughed because they didn't, I didn't know that he had asked somebody else mm -hmm. before me and that's what happened. But anyway, that was, uh, mm -hmm. we, we kept busy, but, uh, you know, it wasn't. So your next stop was to go to Japan, right? Right. Can you tell us about that. Well, uh, after we were assigned and somebody worked on our records, yeah. we, we got on a boat, uh, Gaffney, and headed for uh, Japan. What was the name of Gaffney? Uh, USS Gaffney, G-O-F-E-Y, I think it's somewhere in yep. the uh, USNS General U. J. Gaffney. Yep. So you're on a chip on a Baltic event. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, before we left, uh, a friend of mine was from San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, her mother told her to take some lemons with her because it was supposed to help see sickness. Well, I mean to tell you, by the time we got to Japan, I was eating lemons like they were oranges, but uh, it did help. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the boat well, was great. It was like a vacation for us, but mm -hmm. I really felt pretty bad for the men that were in the hall that were going to Korea. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I understand from some of them, and I think it was horrible. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they got sick, and, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much had a nice trip. It was like, uh, mm -hmm. like being on a vacation for us. Mm -hmm. And of course, the officers and the wives were. Anyway, uh, they put on quite a 
show. And then we used to go to the railroad just to watch their show because yeah. ours was pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but we just went and watched the enlisted men because they, you know, but then we went through that Neptune ceremony. Oh, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, that was, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, other than that, and then we had dances at night. And mm -hmm. Got the captain to uh, have a house and have a dance on the top deck. He was very accommodating, and uh, mm -hmm. so I said, the trip over was great. The, mm -hmm. the weather was fine. We didn't run into any stormy weather. You didn't run into stormy weather? Mm -hmm. Thank God. Yeah. So then uh, you arrived in Japan. Where did you arrive? Yokohama. Yokohama. Uh -huh. And uh, then we were transported, uh, and it was hot and sticky mm -hmm. and miserable. Yeah. And uh, they drove us to Tokyo. Mitsubishi, I guess, with our uh, billet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day, they put us to work because of uh, the weed. But that time, we arrived there the day after they sent American troops into Korea. So they really didn't give us time to get uh, accustomed to being in Japan and getting set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it was uh, pretty hectic when we got there. But it was hot and humid mm -hmm. and very uncomfortable. You mentioned to me this was probably about June 17th, 1950. Right, uh -huh. right. Yeah. Now you said Mitsubishi was your billet. Was that right. the Mitsubishi uh, building? Or? Yeah, uh, well, uh, uh, Mitsubishi, uh, I would assume they call it building. Mitsubishi uh, billets is yeah. what we uh -huh. you know, but I guess it would be, you know, the building. Uh -huh. And you were assigned to General MacArthur's headquarters? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. but originally, I was assigned to uh, the Far East Command filing system, which they had five different filing systems. Mm -hmm. They had the uh, Far East Command, uh, Dewey Decimal, or they had three, I guess they had. And mm -hmm. I think the dog had his own filing system. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I did that for a while, and I just complained because I hated filing. Mm -hmm. And the guys used to warn me, well, if you don't like it here, they'll send me the radio and cable, and they work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't care, just get me out of here. Mm -hmm. So they did send me to Radio and Cape. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was the best experience I had. I think, then. But you had to be, uh, you had to be, uh, I found out later that uh, you handle top secret material there. Mm -hmm. So you definitely had to have a top secret clearance. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know they were checking on you constantly was that we had a girl from Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently at one time she lived with people that had the communist leave, but all mm -hmm. I know is one day she was out of there. Mm -hmm. And she was a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And so I asked her what happened. Mm -hmm. So she told me that mm -hmm. she thinks it's because she lived with those people. And uh, so then she was out of there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did, I think once I handled a top secret message that came to didn't understand it. Oh, yes, I did. I think it was telling me to make off of what he had to do or something like that. Mm -hmm. But when they found out I had it, then it, everybody panicked. Like, I, I was scared to hear from top secret. But, you know, I guess uh, it didn't happen because I was in, but strangely enough, I was in the final system there, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did work with two fellows who had been, uh, uh, been working in that area quite a while. Mm -hmm. When they put me there, these fellows, they were, they were great. I loved them both. Mm -hmm. But uh, they would call out the officers when we'd be, you know, going through the messages and um, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. They would call out a number for filing, for what filing they wanted. Mm -hmm. But these two fellows I worked with, they always messed me up. They, they reversed numbers and things like that. So I'd have to go over to the lieutenant's and the lieutenant level. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I forgot the number. He said, Mary, he said, are they giving you a hard time? I said, well, they do mix up numbers once in a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it was a great it was a great group to work for. Mm -hmm. We worked, uh, like I said, seven days a week, mm -hmm. uh, seven to three, three to 11, 11 to seven. Mm -hmm. But we did get three day passes uh, every once in a while. 
So you had told me you worked in the Daiichi building itself, which was the actual building that General MacArthur had taken. Right, right. And another time we were talking and you told me you actually got to see the general. Yes, I did. Tell uh, us about because, that. Uh, yep. because I uh, delivered messages around and they called what where he came in, they called it the fish bowl because the second floor was like uh, uh, above and you could look down into the, the main lobby and kind of mm -hmm. like that. And he had the army guards standing on both sides. Well, I went up to him one time and they pushed me back to get away from the thing. But once he came, they were the attention, and that was my opportunity to move up. And so I did. And I did get a very impressive man. Yeah. I just uh, mm -hmm. thought a lot of things for him. Mm -hmm. Not only at me, but I think most of the people that worked for him mm -hmm. thought very highly of him and were very disappointed with what happened to him. You want to tell us more about the, the day when he left uh, the command? You were, you were there at the time? Or? I, you know, I don't. I, all I know is, uh, I do remember the, I don't remember the gentleman that took over for him. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was Clark. Uh, I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I don't remember that too clearly. Mm -hmm. but I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure that I was there. I think that I did move on to mm -hmm. other areas. Um, uh, while you were there, uh, we do talk about uh, you were awarded uh, some medals, and uh, we have examples of them right here. Did you get to catch that? Too? Yeah, we have a few of both cameras. Yeah, that's a camera, right? So you were awarded uh, the Korean Service Medal and the Occupation of Japan Medal. Yeah. Let me just put that up again so I can get it on. Good. And also, I see here we have uh, the patch that uh, you wore, uh, and this is the uh, patch for the, the general headquarters of, uh, of General MacArthur. That went on your mm -hmm. uniform. On your uniform. Yeah. Hang on. Two of the both these. Yeah. Okay. Do you recall anybody getting injured or hurt? time you were there, or casualties of any kind? You no, know, we just, well, we did have uh, one girl uh, who was, who was a, a black girl, so her husband was in the first town, mm -hmm. and uh, he went, to, he was shipped to Korea, mm -hmm. and he was wounded, and uh, they sent him to Camp Shimmerfield, and that came to, no, it wasn't that, another camp, they sent him to, to recuperate. He did receive a perfect one, but mm -hmm. eventually they sent it back again. Yeah. So, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, other than that, that was the only close contact I had with uh, mm -hmm. someone who was really injured there. And um, you've already told us about your uh, carrying messages and to the headquarters. And right. That was uh, your assignment. Well, one of, yeah, one of them, uh, you know, they, uh, there were other uh, assignments like the filing area, and then I finally went, uh, went to this area and radio and cable where you, uh, you had to sort the things into different sections, you know, two different and so on. And uh, then, you, then you delivered them. Mm -hmm. But uh, after the filing, you were overseas particularly, how did you stay in touch with your family? Mostly well, by uh, letters. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, and I had a brother who was in the uh, uh, submarine dude, mm -hmm. and uh, he kept writing to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very, uh, very funny. He was very funny. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed his letters. Mm -hmm. And my mom, I, I wrote to her often. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't make much, but I did send some. Food was great. Okay. 
I mean, we had our own mess hall in, in the uh, village. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, we had our own club. Mm -hmm. But the mess hall was, was like the food was out of this world. I mean, mm -hmm. it, was, it was like going in a very witty uh, resort. And, uh, you know, you got the best of everything. Mm -hmm. And I understand, that, at least, I don't know how true that is, but I understand that they grew most of the food that we ate there because uh, most of the vegetables which were beautiful on the market, yeah. but the Japanese used uh, human waste for fertilizer. Yeah. So I guess they didn't feed us that something. But anyway, mm -hmm. it, uh, it was, uh, like I said, I can't say enough for it. It was being excellent. Okay, change. Okay. mentioned that the food was very good, and we have here a, a menu. We'll hold that up so that Alan can catch that on the camera. I just want to see the cover to start with. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's the uh, Christmas menu for the uh, yeah. rack attachment. Hang on, let me get it with the other one. 1950? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get it? Oh, yeah, both of them. Yeah, we're good. Okay, and I'll just, uh, I'll just read a couple of the items here. So, for Christmas, uh, fruit cup and stuffed olives and 
celery curls and consomme royale and roast turkey with sage dressing and roast beef au jus. I'd like that. Baked ham with shrimp and pork. Uh, snowflake potatoes, sweet potatoes glazed, cranberry sauce to name but a few. And then uh, finger rolls and butter and hard candy and mixed nuts and mince pie and fruit cake, French Suzettes, <laughs> ice cream praline. French Suzette's probably for General MacArthur's experience in France in World War I. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's very nice. Thank you. So um, we ask you then, is there anything that you, let's say, did for good luck or any kind of thing along those lines? Or? No, not really. I just... Uh, and you mentioned already you were able to have some parties occasionally and dances and right, that's how people were right. able to entertain themselves, right? And did you get entertainment? Did you have shows of any kind? Uh, no, not not uh, not mm -hmm. there. Uh, we may have had some in Mercury General Hospital. Yeah. I think we even had uh, Frankie Lane. Frankie Lane. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, not not uh, mm -hmm. there in the hospital. Now you mentioned you did get uh, passes and uh, right. we got Liberty Pass here, Armed Forces Liberty Pass. Able to, uh, I think they to get into mm -hmm. general headquarters. Yeah, not not. Let me get, get with the other camera. So you were able to get out and do a little touring around Japan. You told us, and okay. uh, you have a particular story here. We have some pictures. We'll get that on too. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll just um, just hold just hold that up if you can. Looks like a big castle there, right? Osaka Castle. Most of that's thought it was Osaka Castle. Okay, so you went to visit there, right? And then what happened? Yes, well, uh, now I transferred to the Southwest Command, which mm -hmm. was uh, Osaka. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the billets there, I had seen this uh, at the, the shrine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, gee, I would like to go there, but I couldn't get anyone to go with me. Mm -hmm. but from our village, yep. from our village, you could see, mm -hmm. you could see it, and it, it looked like a straight line. Mm -hmm. So they would tell me, just go, it's just straight. Yep. Well, when I got close to it, there were so many turns in and out, and uh, I did get my pictures of the shrine and all that, but mm -hmm. on the way coming up, I didn't know where to go, and I stopped there at the Japanese policeman. He just shook his head. He mm -hmm. didn't know what I was talking about. So I took off on my own, and mm -hmm. uh, I ended up in, in alleyways of uh, 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 Japanese homes and things like that. And it was getting toward evening, mm -hmm. and I said, oh my gosh. I thought to myself, I'm going to have to knock on somebody's door and stay there for the night. But luckily, I went on a little further, and then after uh, I saw uh, a sign that said uh, bus stop to uh, to Nosy Station or something. This I was familiar with. Right. So I got on that. Luckily, I got back to the village. But that was a scary experience. Pretty <laughs> was, huh? Uh, we had talked about uh, humorous uh, things that people did. And you mentioned uh, this prayer that we have here, which I'll read. It's the Occupation Bible, the Occupation Prayer. Our general, who art in Tokyo, Douglas MacArthur, by thy name, thy kingdom be off limits. I will be done in Yokohama as in Tokyo. Give us this day our daily directives and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who command us and lead us not into insanity but <laughs> deliver us from persecution. Scap is the kingdom and, and thou art almighty for the period of the occupation. And then we had some occupation ten commandments here. Uh, it was the year 1950 of the atomic age when there appeared in Japan a terrible vision all who saw it, known and understood, and there came to pass that there was writing on the wall, and that all who came hereafter will know and understand. Thou shalt not black market. Thou shalt not pass the buck or focus um, tons. Thou shalt not hold the house girl better than thy wife. Thou shalt not have leave. Thou shalt not have a reply on any gifts from home. Thou shalt not have any PX rations. Thou shalt not trespass where pleasure is obtainable. Thou shalt 
not abuse thy Japanese brother's custom. Thou shalt not have any beer and whiskey, and thou shalt not envy the stateside, thy stateside brother. And um, the occupation psalm. Uh, the uh, MP is uh, my uh, Lord, I shall not worry. He maketh me to lie down camp at 2300, and he leadeth me beside stagnant canals. I need not fear, for he is right behind me. And he prepares me a DR in the better uh, of the Geisha houses. Um, I need not fear, for he will catch me. Um, and the occupation golden rule, uh, do unto your buddy before he does unto you. <laughs> Good one. And um, so you had you were able to keep some of you were in this situation, huh? The pranks that people would play on each other at the time? Um, no, not really. Mm -hmm. no. okay. Now, we did mention you have some photographs here, and I uh, just want to take a look at uh, each really pretty much from the... Uh, it's at a distance that I took mm -hmm. with uh, the Daiichi building, the particular oh, yeah, we'll see that. Oh, It's yep. very far away, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it might be in here. All right. The Daiichi building. Oops. Yeah, here it is. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm familiar with that already. Right. It's uh, seen plenty of pictures of that. So here's the Daiichi building. Did you learn any Japanese when you were there? Uh, just how the... Hayaku um, and uh, Ohio Gazaimasu. Not, not, not much. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, Daiichi in Japanese means the big one. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ichi means one, and well, Dai means yeah. big. So I think it means the big one. Yeah, Daiichi. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like that, that, I think, has the two flags on it from the United Nations. Yep, the United, United Nations and the United, United States, States flags. Okay. Yep. And for whatever reason, they were half masked. think of the officers, your fellow soldiers? Oh, I think they're great. Uh -huh. I mean, I have no problems. I think they were wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just, uh, I think they're just great. I don't know how to put it up to that. Yeah. Yep. Now, you remember when your service came to an end? Yes. How was that like? Yeah. 
go. <laughs> yes, it did. I did go to uh, some fellow asked me out, and we went and uh, we took the taxi, I believe, to this Japanese house that he knew, friends of his that he knew. Well, we had it. Uh, we had it sitting on the floor. It was very neat inside. The one thing I'll say, Japanese were very clean people. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very uh, clean, mm -hmm. and we sat on the floor. time to go home, mm -hmm. there was no way of getting back. So we, I, I was really curious with them for taking me to this out of the way place and no way to get back to the plant. So finally, I don't know how uh, they uh, got, we, we did get, I think it was a ritual, took mm -hmm. us back to town and then I got back to the barracks. I was not very happy with it. Hold on, just keep, keep that up. Uh, okay. sure. told yeah. you, we told you could have made sergeant? Yeah, yeah that's I good. Decided, uh, it, I was good. on my way home, so mm -hmm. it really didn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, forget about it. I'm on my way home. Mm -hmm. So then you uh, came back to the United States. You come back on a ship? Yes, uh -huh. the uh, Altman, General Altman or mm -hmm. something like that. I think yeah. it's in the back of one of these books. Okay. Dress. I'm just going to get a get on both cameras. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it came out good. Good, really. Let me just ask you, was there much evidence of um, the damage from World War II around Japan still when you were there? Yes. I'm glad I asked you that. Because right yeah. near our village, it was, just, it was just a mess. Really? The building was just wiped out. It was just, uh, it was just nothing but rubble. So this was Mitsubishi, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, the village, we yeah. stayed. Back to the United States, then you were, um, I guess, in California for a bit, or? 
service experience has affected your life and uh, anything else you'd like to add? No. Uh, I, I'm just thankful for the experience and uh, I think the thing that made me want to go in the army was years ago when we were living on the farm they had these so far away places mm -hmm. and I just got the bundle of I guess and I thought I could never afford to travel so the best way to do it would be to join one of the services which I did get the chance to grab it quite a lot. Yes, right. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. now that's, uh, that's how it is. Okay. Well, thank you for serving your country. Mm -hmm. we, we You're welcome. It. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I would do it again if I were younger. 
And thanks for sharing your experience with our uh, history project. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. It did bring you back some memories anyway. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay, Alan? Yep. Good. Good. See, that was great. That was really great.